Hello, last week I put out a video where I showed a new feature that I added to my Skywatching app where I created a virtual pan tilt zoom camera and I wanted to check on the accuracy of the overlay against the Nepean Sailing Club that you see here. And in particular, I wanted to see what the accuracy of the sunset at around the time of the September equinox was. I was keeping an eye on the cloud cover for an hour prior prior to sunset all week long because it was mostly gray overcast and raining over here. And I was kind of afraid that I might have missed the observation for the equinox. And in fact, I did miss that. But there were a couple of things that I wanted to test. The first thing was how accurate was my panoramic sample image that I created. And if I could answer that, then I could also answer another question, which was where should the sun set if the earth was flat? As it turns out, I've got quite a bit of information that I've gathered over the last few days. And now I'm going to share the results. The first evening that seemed to want to cooperate was on Wednesday, the eve of the equinox. And when I arrived, I had completely forgotten which particular hill I was standing on. And in my mind, I had stood on the highest hill, which was this one over here. And when I saw that the sun wasn't quite right, I walked around and tried to find the view that looked a little bit more familiar like this one. And after walking around a bit, I found that this general view was more familiar. Familiar. So at that point, I had kind of remembered where I was standing when I had taken this panoramic view. And I had taken a whole bunch of theodolite readings using my phone as a backup in case the visual images didn't work out. Thursday evening was the day of the equinox. Before I had gone on Thursday, I even took a few pictures so that whenever I got there, I could tried to find the exact spot that I was standing on to avoid any issue of parallax. Even having a reference photograph, I noticed that as I was taking various pictures, even if I was a foot to the left or to the right, or if I was a foot away from this exact spot, I noticed that the sun wouldn't line up exactly where it should have been. So that was one of the first hurdles that I encountered, which was trying to get the exact spot again to avoid all forms of parallax. Unfortunately, I couldn't do much on Thursday because the clouds were starting to roll back in before sunset. It was starting to get really cold and it even started to rain a little bit. So unfortunately, I couldn't stay until the sun had set on Thursday. And then finally, the day after the equinox, which was the Friday, I went back one more time which was the kind of evening that I wanted to see. There were no clouds anywhere. The sun was nice and bright. And by that point, I had already started to figure out that when I had oriented this image, I based it on the magnetic reading of the phone. And even though I had calibrated the phone to get that measurement, I realized after I came home and I analyzed all three days worth of theodolite readings that the magnetic compass on the phone drifted quite a bit despite the fact that I was recalibrating it every few minutes. I had a couple of things that were working against me. The first was that I was coming back time and time again and I had no reference point where I was exactly when I took the image. Even when I was starting to develop a technique to use the various signs of parallax to get my Myself to the same spot again and again. Even then, I found that I was still having trouble getting to the correct spot. And it wouldn't take much. It would be half a step in one direction or the other. And that would definitely affect where the sun would appear in the sky. The second even bigger issue that I had was the compass reading. I'm not going to show every single theodolite reading that I took, but I'll probably include a few here and there along the way. So according to the phone, this was the time and this was the date of the individual reading. And I measured the compass reading that the phone reported to the theodolite app. And to give you an idea of what I 
I mean on the first day when I wasn't consciously calibrating it for every reading there were a few that were going backwards so this one here was 260 and two and a half minutes later this was 262 then three minutes later it was down to 259 and then another two minutes later it was up to 260 then 261 so you can see that it was jumping up and down between readings the second day I was trying to calibrate it I didn't take as many readings as I did on the first I was only there for a short time and the readings were relatively close and then once again on the Friday they were a lot closer together and they didn't have nearly the range of error that the first day did so calibrating the phone really did help I decided to compare the readings of the azimuth against stellarium so I dropped the pin pretty much on the hill I was standing on on the map in stellarium and I picked the appropriate time and date and I got stellarium to give me the azimuth readings I converted it to degrees and then I subtracted the one reading from the other to give me a difference I decided to average the first day's readings together the second day's readings together and the third day's readings together and then I also did another one that is the full sum total average I was thinking what could cause the compass reading to be so off like that and I can't really say if this is true or not but I would probably guess that this area here was either a natural formation or it might have been constructed over the decades to create a harbor for the sailboats they probably took a whole bunch of quarry rock from somewhere and created this area if I were to explain why the compass readings were so off depending where I was standing I would probably suggest that the most likely cause was iron deposits in the rock and that because the iron deposits were non-uniform depending on where I was standing whether I was standing here or whether I was standing a foot or two to the right that would be enough to change the magnetic field to cause the phone's magnetic compass to drift in one direction or the other. So unfortunately, I was not able to get a proper bearing on this background image when I created it. And after playing around with the images, I found that when I set the azimuth with a 4.3 degree bias shift and an altitude bias shift of minus 0.25, that it seems to line up with the various observations that I made. And so that's going to be something that I'm going to have to correct. Now that I have a setting that seems to match three days worth of observations, keeping in mind that the observations I made are not identical because of the parallax of where I was standing when I took that image, I can address the next question that I had, which was, if the earth was flat, where should the sun appear in the sky if I was standing at that spot at that time. And before I show that, I just want to talk a little bit more about how I oriented myself when I took those various images. When I was there, I tried to find the spot left and right where this tree lined up with this other tree and this smaller tree was just slightly off to the right. And I also tried to line myself up so that this tree lined up to the left edge of this park bench. And despite having those landmarks, even then I noticed when I was taking those images that I was still off slightly enough that there would be parallax introduced and there was that discrepancy between the computer generated image and what I saw in reality simply because I was a couple of feet off. For those who haven't seen my app in action or aren't familiar with some of the modes that I've added, I have two 
basic modes that calculate the position of the sun, the moon, and the stars as we would expect if the earth was a globe or if the earth was flat. For the globe earth math, I'm using the various equations that were created by others. For the sun, in this case, the first algorithm that I found that calculated the position of the sun was the NOAA Solar Spreadsheet Calculator. It was a spreadsheet that computed the sun's altitude in azimuth every six minutes for a given location and a date. So I used the formulas that were in that spreadsheet to calculate the sun's position and that's what I'm using here. For the flat earth math what I did was I calculate the latitude and longitude of where the sun should be. Since I am at 45 degrees north, when I look at the sun on the equinox, the sun is at a 45 degree elevation, and I know that the sun is over the equator given the known distance between my location and the equator. I have to conclude using simple geometry that the sun has to be the same height above the earth than I am from the equator, which is 5,004 kilometers. So I place the sun for the flat earth above the earth at 5,004 kilometers. Then using the same 5,004 kilometers per degree of latitude, I'm able to use 2 pi r to get the circumference. I'm able to do a, a bit of math. And what I do is I plot my position on a flat plane, the sun above that flat plane on a separate plane, and I compute in three-dimensional space the direction that the sun should appear if the earth was flat. And from that, I'm able to calculate what the expected altitude in azimuth should be. Just to be fair, this was the time that the sun was over here just before it descended and I couldn't see it any further. And if we apply some form of vertical compression or whatever flat earthers want to use to explain why the sun should appear at the horizon rather than this high up in the sky, that is a good 20 degrees of azimuth difference. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to play a couple of short animations of the generated sunset for the three days that I went out. And I'm going to synchronize the various images that I took along with the various Theodolite app readings that I took. And we can see how all of those compare. It should be very clear that the math that I use to predict where the sun is 
matches what I see. The math that I'm using is for a spherical Earth. The math that I'm using for a flat Earth clearly does not match. So that's going to be it for now. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, I would appreciate the thumbs up, the subscribe, comment below, all that other good YouTube stuff that you have to do for them nowadays. And with that, I'm going to see you in another video soon enough. So bye for now.